Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. I'd like to extend my greetings to the President of the General Assembly, and I would like to greet my brother, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, and I would extend my greetings to all heads of state and government who are participating in this event, international delegations, greetings to one and all. Once again, I am participating in this meeting, in the ordinary session of the United Nations, in order to reaffirm our respect and admiration and our congratulations f for our brother Ban Ki-moon for his contribution to the lives of peoples around the world and Mother Earth. We very much value and wish to express our deep-seated respect for his work as the Secretary General of the United Nations. I come here also to ratify the fact that we are currently finding ourselves in another dark chapter globally caused by capitalist and imperialist barbarism which acts against the dignity of the human being, against the integrity of our common house, our Mother Earth, and it acts against the sovereignty of our countries. Brothers and sisters, currently, according to United Nations data, 94% of all wealth is concentrated in the hands of only 20% of the world population. More than 800 million people around the world are hungry. This shadowy social reality is the true face of capitalism. The greatest objective of mankind in this century should be to eradicate imperialism and capitalism as models for society. Otherwise, we, if we don't build another model for society as soon as possible, what will happen is that the sustainable development goals will be replaced by the goals of sustainable death, death for all living beings and Mother Earth. This year has been the hottest year on record on the planet, and every year is hotter than the year before it. Bolivia is also suffering this year from one of the worst droughts in history. We must stand alert and take immediate action in order to prevent the barbarism of capitalism changing the Paris Agreement and transforming it into a lying agreement and one that's used for blackmail. Brothers and sisters, capitalist countries have constructed walls and borders everywhere, in the water, on land, and in the air. One out of one, every 100 people around the world is a refugee or is a displaced person due to global warming or due to imperial invasions and wars, such as we see in the cases of the displaced of Syria, Iraq, Libya, and other countries. It is our hope that peoples around the world can all begin to construct a universal citizenship, universal citizenry, and a single great country where all peoples would live together in harmony as part of a common family. Israel's expansionist and warmongering policy and that of its allies clearly shows one of the greatest expressions of barbarism in the modern world. We most vigorously condemn Israel's attacks on the civilian population of, the Palest of Palestine, and we demand that Israel immediately cease all hostilities. And we urge the United Nations to immediately 
recognize, fully recognize the state of Palestine and take concrete action in order to stop the brutal genocide against the Palestinian people. Brothers and sisters, in this General Assembly, we return to express our most vigorous rejection of the coercive and unilateral economic measures used by the United States against Cuba for political reasons. It is not enough to restore diplomatic ties. The United States must indemnify Cuba for the economic blockade and the embargo, and it must restore Guantanamo to Cuban territorial sovereignty. We hereby applaud the signing of the peace agreement between the Colombian government and the armed revolutionary forces of Colombia. And thus we clearly show that we are in compliance with CELAC's decision to create a single peace zone in our Latin American region. And we must never forget that peace can only be achieved through social justice. We will highlight the leadership of Cuba in facilitating the establishment of this peace agreement. We deplore the fact that governments other than the United States have been involved in recent bombings and attacks against military positions in Syria, leaving dozens of soldiers dead or wounded, which is a clear demonstration of hypocrisy and ongoing non-compliance with the commitments undertaken in the context of the agreement to have a ceasefire in Syria announced by Moscow and Washington in September of this year in Geneva. We condemn terrorism, violence, and war. But in order to eliminate terrorism, what we must do is to tackle the roots of this scourge of mankind. And what I mean here, brothers and sisters, is that while the wealth is concentrated in the hands of a few, while there is poverty and exclusion, while there is still racism and discrimination, and while there is a lack of respect for the identity and sovereignty of peoples, and while natural resources are being pillaged for imperialist interests, while all this is happening, violence will be encouraged as well as terrorism. We must build a world of peace, equality, and dignity for all peoples. Many sister nations have been impacted by the world economic crisis, but in Bolivia we have developed policies and taken preventative measures in order to tackle the consequences of the global capitalist crisis. Bolivia leads Latin America in economic growth, and it is one of the countries which has managed to achieve complementarity between economic growth, distribution of wealth, public investment, a significant reduction of poverty, while building equality. None of this would have been possible without the sovereign measures such as nationalization of our natural resources and of our strategic businesses. Imperialist interests are creating a process of political destabilization in our region. We condemn a political interference from abroad in our sister nation of Venezuela. And we hail the revolutionary struggle of the people with their commander, Compañero Maduro, at the helm. The new form of world imperial conspiracy in the 21st century is no longer through military coups, but rather through judicial or parliamentarian coups, which can be legal and constitutional based, but are not legitimate if they do not respect the decision of peoples. And we hereby express our significant concern and our rejection of the actions of the OAS Secretary General, which is in breach with the basic principles of the United Nations, the Organization of the American States, 
needs to be a genuine representation of all nations of the Americas and not serve as a agency which is the spokesperson for the interests of the United States. We do not need this type of imperialism to control our people. If the OAS cannot respond while respecting the sovereignty of its member states, it would better if it did not exist at all. Brothers and sisters, on the 18th of September of this year, heads of state and government of the non-aligned movement countries who met in Margarita Island in Venezuela energetically condemned action taken by the United States of America with regard to its enactment of a law on transnational trafficking of drugs in 2015. It has extraterritorial consequences with implementations of measures abroad, which is a clear violation of the purposes and principles of the United Nations charters. And I would here point out that in Bolivia, where there are no military bases, and without the American interference, we have much less drug trafficking in our country. And this has been recognized by the United Nations. And I just want to highlight that fact, brothers and sisters. Due to our armed forces and police efforts, I can report the following. When the DEA was involved, 50% of the drugs were burned and 50% went to DEA business. And one official asked, why is 50% dealt with this way? And we said, well, we're paying your fees with 50%. Investigations to date have been proving that the DEA was instrumental and in instructing the police and law enforcement to assassinate leaders. And that reason and many others is why, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that terrorism and drug trafficking are twins serving the North American imperialist purposes in order to control countries around the world. And I am completely convinced of this fact. Moreover, I would like to once again recall for you that in the year 1879, Bolivia was invaded by Chilean military and British transnationals with a view to taking the many natural resources that we have available by force. Chile specifically recognized on repeated occasions over more than a century the absolute necessity of our country returning to be a coastal nation and committed to negotiate with Bolivia the restitution of its maritime nature. Bolivia, in good faith, trusted in all of these legal commitments undertaken, which served as the basis for our request put before the International Court of Justice. The court declared that it had full jurisdiction over this matter on the 24th of September of last year after the government of Chile objected with regard to the issue of jurisdiction. We understand that this is a time of dialogue. It's a time to work together towards solutions that would make it possible to resolve pending issues in a peaceful manner and in the context of true integration of our peoples. We would therefore invite Chile to put an end to one of the longest conflicts in Latin American history. The solution to this conflict is still a pending debt between our peoples. The solution to this conflict would not just benefit the Bolivian people, it would also benefit the Chilean people and contribute towards integration of Latin America. We are sure and convinced that we will find a solution whereby everyone is a winner. 
I would like to thank the international community and international organizations, as well as the various presidents of the peoples of the world for their ongoing support so that Bolivia would have sovereign access to the sea. And I'd also like to highlight the fact that the United Nations created an institution which is as important as the International Court of Justice in order to re peacefully resolve international conflicts and disputes. We trust that the court will serve justice. Brothers and sisters, our fervent desire is to make the message of our brother, the Pope Francisco, a reality, and that is to build bridges of dialogue and to bring down the walls that divide us. We wish to initiate dialogue that would satisfy our mutual interests and that of our peoples. In Bolivia, we are constructing a country that would serve as an example for the world, a model of equality, liberty with dignity and sovereignty. And for these reasons, we insist and will continue to insist on the obligation of all basic services being recognized as human rights. And moreover, we insist that it's important to respect and recognize the rights of Mother Earth. The new world order with social justice must be constructed based on brother and sisterhood of all peoples in harmony with Mother Earth to live well. Thank you.